Hello, this is Overlord Bo, and this review will contain two ships instead of the one usual one. So, today we'll be talking about the Super Sips, the Stevastation, and the Russian biased, you know, uh, Super Super Petro, or the Novo Wasserbrisky. I have no idea how to say it, so my apologies. Now, both Super Ships will be available in the next auction in 12.5. As usual, the builds will start at 100 million credits. If you've been using asymmetrical battles, by the way, should be pretty easy for you. With the top 1,050 bidders winning the ship, note that this is the this is 1,050 winners over all service combined. Is that right? Wait, 1,050? Actually, 1,050? Or is it like? Did I get the number wrong? Let me see. Uh, yeah, it's 1,050 across all servers. Huh? Okay, then. All right. So it's across all three servers. So NA, EU, and the Asia servers. So huh, that's pretty interesting number then. Uh, these ships will be available for purchase in their respective tech trees after three months. So I don't recommend buying them now at their inflated costs. Uh, unless, of course, you've, you know, abused the living hell out of asymmetrical battles. You can easily make like five, six mil a day off of asymmetrical battles. It's so easy, just saying. But if you don't have a lot of credits, I definitely say just be patient and wait for them to be formally released. But as always, I'll be showing my recommended captain skills, followed by a brief overview of their stats and my opinion of them. So first we're looking at the replay of the Devastation. So let's talk about the Devastation. Uh, the Devastation is the Tier 11 Royal Navy battleship, so after the Conqueror, uh, the build will be shown on the top right. Now, the Devastation is very similar to the Conqueror, as it's a Tier 11, but it carries a whopping 16 guns and it has almost 100k of HP, and the armor will be shown on the top right. And if you thought it has being 100k HP is threatening enough, if you have the signal flag, which increases the ability for healing, it has a heal of 52,900 HP. If that is not threatening enough, ah, uh, well, no, now it is. Now, if you thought a Conquer HG salvo was horrifying, now imagine that same salvo, but hitting 25% harder. And the dispersion will be shown on the top right for the dispersion. Now, you do also get the extra 17k HP with the super heal. Also makes the decision much harder to kill, which I was just talking about. Uh, otherwise, her playstyle remains the same. You burn everything down to death with the great and powerful British HE. But remember to use AP against broadside targets, which I don't really get to demonstrate too much in this match, unfortunately. Uh, she has potential, but most players will just fa farm damage in her and miss opportunities to carry. Now, with the Devastation in particular, I had a lot of trouble where Sap would just eat me alive. I had a match where a Marco Polo was steadily just doing when I wasn't saturated, like 20k, 19, 15k salvos, just slapping the living hell out of my upper deck and superstructure. It was not a it was not a fun time for sure at all. It was a it wasn't fun. In this match as well, I also got absolutely hammered with the Yoshino HE. I feel like that Yoshino alone, which I don't know if he started farming yet. Uh, no, he has. He has. He had to have done at least like a hundred, like a hundred twenty k to just me. Like, good lord, man. Yoshino HE is not fun to mess with, man. Especially for being farmed by, especially in like a. British battleship where the armor isn't that like tanky. Uh, it's very, 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 very painful to get far. Very, 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 very painful. painful. Now, with this particular super ship, you do not get any funny buttons. Same with the Russian biased uh, tier 11 super petro. <laughs> anyway, um, moving on. I had a cough there for a second. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what that was. Um, but anyway. But no, this ship is pretty much a super conqueror. So if you enjoy playing conqueror, you'll definitely have fun playing this ship. I did enjoy playing this ship whenever I was playing it. But 
Yeah, like at the same time, it's like, eh, it's like, is it really worth playing the ship when you're just gonna, you can just play the conquer and just do the same thing? Nah, I want to play this and have an advantage, so I'll just play this one instead. Get that extra advantage, you know? What's well, like 300k in debt when you have like 2.5 billion credits, you know? Who, who needs, who needs credits anyway? I'll be okay. I'll be just fine. I'm not too worried about it. If you guys are interested in Game of the Devastation in uh, the upcoming auction, I would like to know what your bet is going to be. I may bet... I'm not going to tell you guys how much I'm going to bet, but I have 2.3 billion credits to mess with. Right now, my on, uh, for, for me anyway, I have 2.3 2 billion credits I can put potentially for the Devastation if I do want to get it. So I'm curious what you guys are going to potentially bet. Or if you don't want to tell me, it's okay. I'll probably show on stream what I'll be betting. Because I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to bet on the Devastation or the, pe the Super Petro. Normally, I don't bid on these at all. But this time around, I made this bid on one of them just for the funsies. Sometimes I like causing a little bit of chaos, you know, a little, a little chaos in the world. You know, just a little bit of chaos, you know, just, just, just mess up the anarchy, you know. Because if you put in, because if you put in a lot of credits, you can throw off the auction a little bit, which is always fun to do. Because the minimum bid is going to be around 100 million like it is like always. And I know that last time I got a lot of people to bet a lot of credits. So I'd raise the price. So we'll see how it does this time. I also have a very distinct feeling that in this particular auction, with the fact that we have asymmetricals going on and how much credits people are earning in that game mode right now, that... 100% people are going to have a lot more credits to throw at this particular auction for the Devastation and the Super Petro or whatever you call it, the Novo, Novo, Novo OP thingy, whatever it is. And of course, I they haven't told us yet what the premium ship is. They always release, there's always some kind of premium they normally do with the super ship auctions. There's always a premium ship that they bring back from the dead has been locked away for years behind Santa containers and then people can bet on it. So I'm trying to figure out, we have no idea what the ship is going to be. Mm, what's an old premium they haven't brought back for a while? Hmm. I think maybe since the 4th of July events coming up, it could potentially be an American ship. Mm. Maybe the Massachusetts or Georgia could potentially be it. I'm just guessing. Like, I, I'm not 100% sure, but they always, oh, they've been adding back lead. like the old premiums. They brought back the belt. Did they bring back the Belfast? Uh, I don't remember. I know they brought back the T-60 Wood. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I have no idea, like, what it's going to be. I'm just guessing either Massachusetts or Georgia, just because of the fact that they're old premiums, like, the old their older premiums, and that it, with the 4th of July event coming up, they may bring back one of those. But again, it's most likely just going to be an old watch away premium that hasn't been sold in years. That they're just going to bring back specifically for the auction, which is normally what they do. Um, they usually do the auctions like I think every quarter. I think it's at this point. So once one a quarter. Uh, it's like there's going to be four a year. But we will see, of course. We'll see whenever it becomes an actual thing. But Jesus, man, this thing just tank. It, it just has such a big heal, dude. It's just like, my goodness. Also, these matches with these super ships were played at like two, like, like three or four in the morning. 
So if you see the mash bacon being all weird, that's why, by the way, that is particularly why. So my apologies for the fact that these matchmakings are really weird for both this ship, the Devastation and the Super Petro. I'm kind of a night owl when I work on these videos. It's like 8.20 in the morning and I haven't gone to bed yet. I'm working on this video right now and the West Virginia. The West Virginia already finished. That video will have gone out yesterday, whenever this video goes out. And then this one we got today and the Hal Ford, I don't know when I'll be getting that video out. I haven't figured it out yet. We'll see though, we'll see. But yeah, I did an okay match for the Devastation, 1704. Of course, I got Prior Futh, and of course, I got Dreadnought, and High Caliber is super nice. High Caliber is actually really nice with the fact I only did, like, how much did I do? Like, 100. Go back. Go left. Go back, recording. Go back. 131k. Okay, thank you. All right, well, with that out of the way, let's move on to the Super Petro, or the Novo Risk... Novo... Novo... Just brisk. I have no idea how to say it, so I'm just going to call it Russian, I'm just going to call it the Super Petro. So the Super Petro is the Russian Petro of Olisk line, uh, tier 11. Her captain build will be shown on the top right, so you guys can take a look at that. The Novo continues the line aggressive close range play style uh, of the Petro. So they pretty much play very similarly. The power... Of the powerful AP and improved bounce angles let her wreck any broadside ship while her armor makes her extremely hard to kill and the dispersion will be shown on the top right now putting now pretty much whenever I was playing this ship they, this ship legit has better it has way better dispersion than the Petro does uh, it's legit it is that's why I keep calling it Russian bias or super Petro this is pretty much what the Petro was before it was nerfed so if you guys know when the Petro, how good it was before, well, this is pretty much it and a little bit extra. So you'll be probably seeing a lot of these things roaming around and a lot of people are probably going to be betting on it. So uh, have fun with that thing. Uh, the armor scheme will be shown on the top right. So you guys can take a look at that armor. One thing though is that her Alver, her... Uh, her damage output against angle target is quite bad though, especially when kiting. So you definitely want to try to set up crossfires with your BBs to get the most out of your guns. Anytime I had any broadside target, as long as I could actually aim, this thing just blocked them. Just blocked. Killed them. Destroyed them. Made them suffer. Destroyed them. Dev struck them. Just slapped them. Also, it did a big chunk of damage. Anytime it hit a DD with the HE, like, good gosh, man, it just slapped like the living hell out of it. And it was just so beautiful to do over and over and over and over again. It was very, 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 very nice. I had, it was so much fun to actually do it. It was actually very, very, very nice. Very, very nice indeed. <sighs> Anyway, I got a little bit distracted there, so uh, my apologies uh, in that regard. Anyway, what were we talking about? Oh. oh, we were talking about the Russian bias. Ah, uh, yes, ah, uh, yes, Russian bias. Yes, yes, Russian bias, yes. <laughs> I did like the fact that in like the game chat, someone was like McDonald's in the Novo and he was like, fuck off. <laughs> he, um, I do like, playing on the McDonald's Wi-Fi account. I think it's pretty hilarious to meme in it because everyone's like, oh, oh, you actually on McDonald's Wi-Fi? And I like jokingly just say yes. I've had the account name for a bit on my press account and it is pretty fun to do and it's pretty meme -y. And I do like sometimes taking it out whenever I'm doing these kind of reviews and just mess with people a little bit. <clears throat> but yeah. It's a lot of fun to do sometimes. It's a, it's a little bit trolly, a little bit trolly around here. A little trolly, little trolls, a little trolly around here. Maybe a little, maybe a smidgen, just a smidgen. If you guys were hearing some uh, wheel noises or that's Bo. Uh, Mini Bo is currently up and he is running around 
like a mad chinchilla. He's not very happy currently for some reason. I think he wants attention. So whenever I'm done with this video, I need to pick him up and give him some pets. And then I'll be going to bed after. It is currently 8.24 in the morning. So that's fun. Nice. I love the fact that I said this thing has better dispersion than Petro, but then I just look and it's like, oh, dang, this thing is terrible. It's disaster. You're supposed to have good dispersion, not bad dispersion. Also, right here. Okay, right here. Look where that white line was and look where the sub is. Okay. Oh, God, man. That is so aggravating. Like, why is the line so far ahead of the damn sub? Legit, it was like three or four kilometers ahead. How are you supposed to, how are you supposed to hit that? It's so baloney. It's like, come on, man. It's like, it's supposed to be next to the sub, like within like a kilometer or two. But like, that was like three or four kilometers in front of the damn thing. It's like, how are you supposed to actually hit that? The sub? When it's that far ahead? Like, come on. And the thrasher isn't that quick either. That was a thrasher, right? I, I actually don't remember. I can't read. I can't, I cannot read like the in-game thing when I'm like watching the replay of the match. I actually can't read it because it's like, the, it's really blurry. So if someone could actually tell me, I'd appreciate it. But if it was a thrasher, like I believe it was, thrashers are incredibly slow underwater. So there's no reason on why it would be that far ahead. Like, you know, the U25 or a Baleo, I could possibly understand because they can go like 30 or 35 knots underwater, which wouldn't understand why it's that far. But thrashers can go only go like, uh, like 20, 20. No, it's like uh, 20 or 24 knots underwater. They can't go very quickly at like 30 meters and below. So I don't understand why it's that far ahead. It's just super aggravating. It's just, uh, like, I don't know why. It's like, uh, it's very, very irritating. Also, if you guys are wondering here, I was a complete dunce. I got super greedy with all of these shots and I kept just aiming too low. I was like, man, why am I not doing anything? And it's just, it's just obvious that I'm just being too greedy, trying to get that Citadel shot. And the moment I aimed a little bit higher, just to watch you look, the moment I aimed a little bit higher, aiming a little bit safe, then I get it. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Yes, yeah, very nice. Good, very good, yes. Yeah, I was pretty dumb and I uh, aimed a little bit I, I just got too greedy. It's one of the biggest things I tell people too. I'm like, you need to aim higher. It's like, you need to not, you need to not be greedy. And I do the exact same thing. So idiot me. Anyway, we did win the match. And of course, you know, I died. So uh, yeah, I guess it's not Russian OP. So my condolences for that. All right, so what was the score of the match? We did 112K damage, two kills. And we were top of the team at 2,334. That makes sense with the submarine kill and the DD kill. Kind of makes sense with that. But anyway, that's going to be the video for the day. If you guys have any questions or concerns, definitely leave them in the comments down below. Well, this is Overlord Bo, and I'll talk to you all later. Thank you guys again for watching. Blech!